What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Classy Nerd Talk, where we talk nerdy to you. Uh, today's segment, like always, is uh, Movies Then and Now. Yeah, I'm, movies. We like movies. I am now. And I'm then. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> we always get that segment going on that. Uh, so if you want to know more Sorry, about the, there for this little segment, we have other videos on there, and uh, you can check those out on the channel. All right, so last week uh, we decided my genre was going to be Thriller. thriller. And you're going to talk about Psycho, 1960 tonight. Yes. So and I picked a crime, and I'm going yeah. to talk. And you gave me the movie Seven from '95. So it sounds like it's going to be an interesting evening today. Okay. So um, let's go with you first because last week. Oh, you're always making me go you first. Went second. Always last making week. me first. All right. So movie Seven from 1995 is Morgan Freeman, Brad Pitt from Remember from Fury, mm -hmm. one of our favorite actors, and uh, Kevin Spacey. Ooh, really good movie. Yeah, Kevin Spacey. Yep. You know, it starts. the movie starts out in a crime scene, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And it's got Morgan Freeman as the older cop who's mm -hmm. getting ready to retire. And Brad Pitt is the young punk from a big city, thinks he knows it all. He's going to come in here and show Morgan Freeman how to clean up the town. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of cop movies, it's like, uh-huh, he's going to show him <laughs> something, isn't he? Yeah. So anyway, the movie is, as the title says, Seven. It's about the seven deadly sins. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Spacey's the bad guy in this movie. John Doe. John Doe. John Doe. John Doe. That's the name of his character, I'm yeah. pretty sure. I don't think they ever even find a name for him, do they? Uh, or maybe no. at the end. They I think at the end they find out who he is. Yeah. So, but anyway, the movie um, goes on just the normal routine stuff. You know, Morgan Freeman's, you know, they find this crime committed. Morgan Freeman's trying to talk to Brad Pitt about what's going on. Brad Pitt, of course, going all young and anxious, ready to get in here and stuff like that. Oh, I know what's happening and blah, blah, blah. And, Morgan Freeman's like, really? Who do you think you are? What do you mean you know? This is not how things work here. We mm. don't just jump to it and do things. We just we look at things. You know, we're we're investigators here. We got to mm. figure out what's going on. So, you know, you're kind of like, oh, shut down right there. But um, by the time the movie's over, Morgan Freeman depends on Brad Pitt, mm. you know, to, to solve this case and to get into it and stuff. So they work really good together. Um, if you're a little squeamish. In your stomach about things. A lot of scenes in this movie probably would like turn your stomach. I think the first it, scene, like the first kill, was gluttony. And, and the, the he big heavy set guy yeah, and all that was, stuff. He was he eats himself. Like they force him to eat and stuff, and they kind of, they don't show it, but they kind of like you know show the crime scene. And it's yeah, kind of you rough. can tell. And well, and then again, just really all the crime scenes are pretty rough mm -hmm. in the entire movie. I think. I think the be um, I think the most grossest one was probably the guy that he had strapped to the bed. That's oh, those still barely alive. alive. Yeah, it's still alive. Yeah, and he'd been there for several years. Mm -hmm. So you, so, and this is the thing too that you can see that that the the character John Doe that um, Kevin Spacey plays, he had thought this out and, and planned this out over a long period of time, and was actually doing this over a long period of time. And I think Brad Pitt just came in onto it when the thing just starts to unravel mm -hmm. and get sucked into the whole thing, which just adds to Kevin Spacey's characters. Um, goal of trying to um, finish whatever he was doing. Yep. So it was really kind of a kind of a thriller there. Um, really not what, really what to sh sure what to say about the movie. I know the movie was was actually one of the best movies of its time. I mean, it lost the the to the uh, to the awards for Apollo thirteen, which came out the same year, which is really so, hard. <laughs> but this movie was so good. I think it cost like thirty five million to make. Mm -hmm. And grossed over three hundred million. Oh wow! That's how big of an impact this movie was, and how many people went to see it. Yeah, it was really, really one of the top films of its day. Uh, Grant, I didn't get to see it in the theater. I thought I, I, we we got it on a, on a DVD and watched it when it came out. I believe, if not a tape at the time, I mm -hmm. don't recall at the time when it first came out. Um, but it was it's one of those movies that within the first ten minutes sucks you in and doesn't let go mm -hmm. through the whole movie. Um, it took me a long time. I probably had to watch the movie the, the second time before I realized what was in the box at the end of the movie. Because um, I don't think I was paying attention or something right when I first watched it, it the first time. So when you see it at the end of the movie. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, after the second time, I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, really kind of makes you start. A lot of the stuff in the movie really was like, ooh, wow, really? Mm -hmm. You know, because the movie tried to delve into, I believe, the mind of this guy, this killer, mm -hmm. and what he was doing and how he was doing and stuff. Not sure if it really came up to a reason why, because I don't think there was ever any really reason why he did it, per se. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, he talks about a lot of it trying to, uh, I'm probably going to get this wrong, on him trying to make a statement and how he's trying to show that, hey, we're not in control of things in this world and in life. An obese man, a disgusting man who could barely stand up, a man who if you saw him on the street, you'd point him out to your friends so that they could join you in mocking him, a man who if you saw him while you were eating, you wouldn't be able to finish your meal. And after him, I picked the lawyer, and you both must have secretly been thanking me for that one. This is a man who dedicated his life to making money by lying with every breath that he could muster to keeping murderers and rapists on the streets. Murderers. A woman. Murderers, John, like a yourself. Woman. I think that's the biggest thing he was pointing out is the reason why. And again, if you look at, and this is probably, I would guess, taken from somebody's knowledge of crime and the things pe police go through and, and maybe even people talking to criminals and stuff, why they do things, because to some extent, based on some of the shows I've seen on TV before, there really is no reason why some crimes co are committed. Mm -hmm. I mean, even today, when you see stuff that happens and murders that happens, and they talk to the person, you see them in court, and they they even some of them aren't even remorseful, and some of them say they're sorry, and you don't know why they do it, and they say they don't know why they did it, mm -hmm. and they just did it. Useless killings and useless things that happens, you just like, wow. Why does this some of this stuff happen? And I think the movie puts a lot of that in there. It never really answers to to the average person of wh why it happens, but just that it does happen. Mm -hmm. If you had to rate this movie one to ten, what would you rate this movie? Quite honestly, a ten. Oh, wow! This movie. What? Wait. What? what? Whoa! Whoa! Really? This uh. this movie. In so many ways, and it's hard to really explain because really, and you can see I'm struggling to even talk about the movie and explain it, but it, it hits you on so many different levels. Again, based upon um, the criminal mind, the police mind, um, the, the off-duty the individual's mind and how they got to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the Brad Pitt's wife, Gwyneth Paltrow, how she has to deal with that. You know, it's just yeah. really, really difficult yeah. in trying to deal with that. Yep. Someone sneaked in to say <laughs> hi, so <laughs> we'll keep that in. Anyways. We got That's spies fun. in on us, yeah, too, trying to find out what's going on there. Yeah. Too bad it's not my grandkids coming in and <laughs> jump up in the screen saying, ah! But it wasn't, so. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it just, just so many levels. The, the quality of the movie, the way it was made, mm -hmm. the, the, the pace of the movie, the setting of the movie, um, it just... It just really leaves a mark on you. Just mm. something. It's not that it's the kind of movie that, based on because it's so graphic and the type of movie it is, that I'd want to see it all the time. Oh, yeah. um, but it's just so much depth there. Mm -hmm. Makes you makes you really stop and think. Oh yeah. You know, so why Apollo 13 probably got the Academy Award at that time was probably because, woo, it was great and fantastic and it was spacey and all kinds of stuff, but. Um, Again, it was a different tone of a movie, but this one really, again, like I said, it, it was so popular at the time, you know, the amount of money that it brought in, it really had a big fan base. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, why I picked this movie for you was because it was one of my favorite movies of all time, um, crime-wise. It's disturbing how easily a member of the press can purchase information from the men in your precinct. What the fuck? Put your gun down! I visited your home this morning. After you'd left, I tried to play husband. I tried to taste the life of a simple man. It didn't work out. So, I took a souvenir. Uh, I really like the thriller aspect to it. I love Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey oh, did yeah. so well. He's like that crazy guy that you just love to hate. Oh, yeah. Uh, but the, the ending is like one of the most emotional endings because... Um, even though it's a little corny, I, I do say, because Brad Pitt goes like I, this, he's like, <laughs> like that, but that, that's the only I, I don't know, I, I mean, I really don't know if that's corny or not. It, this, I mean, how would you feel, I mean, I don't want to, if you haven't seen it, I hate to give away the end of the movie, I don't really don't want to spoil it there, oh, yeah. but you know, if you had to deal with that situation happen to you, I mean, you, you would break down too. Yeah, yeah, you I would. mean, just, just simple fact, I mean, you would. Yeah, so... 
I, I recommend this movie. You recommend this movie. It, it's really shocking that you gave it a 10. But I, I really mm-hmm. think that it's worth the 10. So. It is. I believe so. Okay, so this, uh, the movie I got to pick was Psycho, uh, 1960. And it was filmed by one of the greatest directors of all time, Albert Hitchcock. Hitchcock, yes. Hitchcock was the, the, the expert of suspense. <laughs> That's what I like to call it. And it actually he led him master. It, that. He he led uh, a lot of directors to be the way he was. Uh, Spielberg was a huge fan of Albert Hitchcock. Um, so by getting into this, okay, so pretty much this movie is about, um, um, uh, well, it's Vern Miles uh, is in the film, um, which is played by Lena Crane. Also, um, Shot Liberty was played by Vincent. Um, uh, but what's cool about Linda Crane, Linda Crane was in a couple movies that, uh, that I've seen her in before was actually, uh, Who Shot Liberty Vance. And oh, okay. she played also in The Searchers, which is a John Wayne movie that's actually considered one of the best Westerns of all time. Um, uh, John Gavin was in it, Sam Lupus, he played Sam Lupus, and he also played Julius Caesar in Spartacus. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, he played. Oh, that's cool. He played Julius Caesar. That's cool. Uh, and Anthony Perkins played Norman. Norman. Okay, so this movie's about a woman Norman. that is a secretary that embezzles like forty. I think it was like forty thousand uh, dollars. She embezzles it, and then she goes on the run from her employer, and she checks into the motel ran by Norman, but is also dominated by his mother. His mother, you know, which is. Um, which is pretty much the main plot of the story. I'm not going to ruin it for anyone that hasn't watched Psycho because it is a masterpiece, and you should watch it. Um, everyone should watch it. Yeah, everyone should. But I guess most of our viewers probably really Oh, have. yeah, they probably have. Uh, so Albert Hitchcock does Albert Hitchcock, you know. He does it perfectly. And what I mean by that is the shots are quality. The music is what sets the tone. And this actually leads up to a lot of horror films later on. Like, the horror film was, like, made from this movie. Like, the whole sound bite, especially the biggest scene ever in cinema history where he pulls back the curtain. This is psycho. If but, you, if you, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I yeah. think that if you had a game show and you say, and it was about movies, like probably, mm-hmm. you know, one of the, sh- the shows on TV right now could probably put out there and say, what is this from? And they make that sound. Everybody would probably know. Yeah, they would. They would know that because that's a huge part of American society now yeah. as like a pop culture reference. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, but the, my favorite part of the movie and I'll, I'll always remember it. And we were talking about this a little bit ago. But the biggest part of the movie that impacted me the most was Norman at the end of the film. At the end of the film, I'm not going to reveal who Norman is or anything that goes on with like leading up to the plot. But there's a scene where there's just no audio. And Norman's sitting on a chair like this. And they're doing a narration. And all of a sudden, Norman looks up at the camera. And he just gives this smile that's like, <laughs> and it just cuts off those. Yeah. And you're just like, that creeps me out. Like, I got little goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, hair on your arms. Yeah, man. Yeah, like, it's, uh, it, wow. it, it chilled me. Like, it was like something that terrified me as a child. You know, I was terrified of Chucky, and then I got over it when I was older. But this, <laughs> this still terrifies me. It, Albert Hitchcock does the film, he does it with all of his films where he puts you. In that universe, and I love how Albert Hitchcock does oh, yeah. it. That's why he's a great director to mimic. Uh, you know, Spielberg did it. Whole bunch of like most people that do like horror genre. Period looks at Psycho as like their main thing. Uh, and you know, there's sometimes when you should just not remake movies. You know, they did a they well, did, crap. Yeah, they did a remake of Psycho in 1982, which we'll probably talk about and remake and that. Um, but also, too, is some of the fun facts about this movie. All right, fun fact. So, so I didn't tell him any about the fun facts that I know a little bit. So, Albert Hitchcock on set told his actors they had to raise their right hand and swear that none of this film would ever be put out in the public. They could not secretly tell anyone anything about the film. Really? Yes. And then what's even better 
is no one knew the ending twist. Oh, wow. Until it was shot. Mm. So it was kind of like the whole uh, Star Wars. Yeah. You know, with Darth Vader. I, the first thing I was going to say, it's just so, like Star Wars. Yeah, so oh, Albert Hitchcock knew, was the guy that perfected that. So uh, also a lot of other films did that. Uh, Hannibal Holocaust did that. They they kept their actors in hiding, and people thought he, he, the director really murdered them. So yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Another thing is, this is actually a really funny one. It was the first movie ever in America to have toilet flushing on the film. Really? It was the first movie ever to have toilet flushing. Oh my goodness, that's so funny. <laughs> it's weird. And then this one is actually my favorite one. I've known this for a while because of my my beautiful girlfriend. Um, Walt Disney would not let Albert Hitchcock film at Disney World. Oh, really? Because he made that sick, disgusting movie, Psycho. <laughs> that's what he said. Oh, wow. So it, that's, that's something that. that's really, really cool. But there was a lot of other things. If you want to know more, just look up on Movie Database. Movie Database has like a whole bunch of trivia about it. Uh, but those were the main ones that I've seen and I've heard about before. So That's pretty wild. If so, I, so what would you rate this film? Ten. ten. I, I have easy to, ten. It's an easy, easy ten. ten. Yeah, two tenths to nine. The reason why is because this film is so impactful. It's the biggest, it's one of the most iconic films of all time. You cannot be like, hey, I don't know what that film is. Yeah. You could hear the music and you'd be like, oh. I know what that music's from. I've heard that music before because it's been used so many times. Or that scene, it's been used so many times. Or the part where she like turns around and there's a corpse. That's been done multiple times. It's that kind of that kind of sound of that movie is kind of like back years and years ago, which you wouldn't know. There was a game show on TV about name that tune, mm-hmm. and everybody would go back and forth. I can name that in seven notes. I can name that in four notes. I can name that in two notes. And you would not believe the people, even at the time, that could name a song in one or two notes. But again, those four that's classic sounds. Mm-hmm. You, same thing with that. If you started the sound, boom, everybody knows what that is. Exactly. That's one of those most iconic films. So if you haven't watched Psycho, I really, really highly recommend Psycho. In fact, if you're up to it, we recommend that you watch both these movies in the same night. Exactly. That would make an enjoyable it, popcorn. It would, be, it would be like a thriller and a thriller. So yeah. start out with Psycho and with Seven. It would yeah. be perfect. So That would make a right. day. So next week on Classic Nerd Talk Movies in and Now, I chose the genre of... You went with sci-fi. Oh, sci-fi. Yeah, we had to do an update because of a couple movie changes we had in the lineup. Yeah, there. So, so uh, lost him for a second. I did sci-fi, <laughs> and you picked. I picked uh, documentary. And uh, what movie? Did oh, I you mean the what you were? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you were asking what movie? Um, I asked you to watch Fiend Without a Face from 1958, uh, which there's a lot of people who don't know what that movie is, and I watched that numerous times as a kid. And it's one of the ones that kind of grows on you, you kind of like after a while. Just because of the eerie sounds it makes before something happens. So it's like Plan it's, 9 from Outer Space. No, it's not <laughs> like Plan 9. That had weird sounds through the whole thing. Oh, but this oh. one is, it's, it's one of those movies, you know, today I get mixed on movies like that, on, on monster movies. Do I want to know up front what, what, what it is? Or do you want to wait till later in the movie and find out? And it seems like more movies are better if you find I out think, later. I think in this movie, uh, the, the, the creature's invisible most of the time. I think. It is. Yeah, okay. It yeah, is. Yeah, so I remember most of it. Yeah. All right, so you picked Documentary. And, and the movie you picked for me to I watch is... Bigger, Stronger, Faster. Yes. That was... What 2008. 2008. Now, this movie is about like steroid use and a whole mm-hmm. bunch of other things. Uh, Gold's Gym, uh, weightlifting, and how people have to overcome those things. Uh, but I highly love this film. This film's a really good doc. Uh, it's one of those docs that just, you know, it's just there. But it's like a hidden gem. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Sounds really, but, in it. be really interesting. But, yeah, catch us next week. Uh, if you haven't liked the channel, uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Also, remember, is there's more content and we do these. We'll be putting out videos mostly every other week now uh, or every week. You know, we got more if people. Keep, there's more content. So, yeah, so if we can get... We're rolling on these. Yeah, we'll start doing stuff every week. All right. Just remember, stay classy. And nerdy. We'll see you guys.